Hello guys and gals, welcome back to another episode of Haunted Gaming. This time we take a look at a gaming creepypasta called Belief in Oneself. Hello Internet! I feel like this is the best place to tell a story to all of you today. It's been four years since I was detained for being mentally unstable by the government. A false accusation at best, but I guess they have their reasons. Ever since I was a child, I was different. Not physically, but mentally. I was diagnosed with OCD at an early age, and I hallucinated things often. Not unlike your average drunk. The difference is, after 20 years of having to put up with my visions, people have gotten used to it. No one seems to trust me or what I say after all. It could, I could just be seeing things. Maybe I'm envisioning me typing this post right now, but enough about me. Let's get to the story. It all started five years ago. I was 16 and my older brother had left for college. While I was interested in card games, poker, war, even things like Magic the Gathering, my brother was a huge video game buff. He absolutely loved all video games, Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, Capcom, uh, Konami, you name it. He owned nearly every main console from the NES to the Game Boy Micro. It was what he referred to as his collection. However, his favorite system without a doubt was a Nintendo GameCube. He had nearly every game worth your while for the GC, and he played it by far the most out of all the consoles. He'd often brag about having 10,000 hours in Melee. Him and me were very distant. We didn't really like each other, because he couldn't put up with me being so wrong all the time due to my chronic hallucinations. I tried so hard uh, to make him love me, because he was the only person even close to my age that I knew. My parents were my only friends. However, when he left for college that day when I was at school, he left me a box, just your average box, probably filled with stuff from the attic or something. When I opened it, to my surprise, was his cherished GameCube. I couldn't believe my eyes, and I probably shouldn't have it in retrospect. Inside that box was an absolutely obscene amount of games, as well as everything from Wave Race to Paper Mario 2. On top of these games was a single letter, entitled To Mark. I sat down at the table and ripped the envelope open. Dear Mark, I've, I haven't been a brother to you. It has taken me 16 years to realize that, but I finally have. I cannot even begin to understand what you've gone through, so I won't try to empathize with you. But I do know that your life has been hard. Take this as a token of my love. It is that GameCube, along with all 150 of the games I had. I know you'll like video games if you just give them a try, so have fun. I want you to. Your brother, Chase. It was something I always watched him do, play video games. It seemed like such a fun and interactive world, and I longed to get involved, but he would never let me. He always said that I wasn't mentally capable of playing them. Despite this, I wanted to please him, so I played. And played, and played, and played. Through all 150 of his games, I got 100% completion on every single one of them. It took me a whole year, but once I finished, I called him up and told him about my accomplishment. All 150 games? You're really getting to like video games, aren't you? I wish I could congratulate you, but you're not quite done yet. There's one more game in there. Go play it. It's one of my favorites. I'm sure you'll love it. He hung up. 151, I thought? Perhaps I missed something after all. I went back to my game shelf, and lo and behold, after scanning the shelf, I did see a game that I hadn't played yet. Super Smash Bros. Melee. How did I forget that one? It was his favorite after all. I asked my dad to play a few rounds with me, and he obliged. I popped the small disc into the GameCube and loaded it up. I couldn't believe what I had missed out on. This game is so much fun. He had unlocked all the characters and all the stages, a true completionist. After playing three rounds, my dad went back to making dinner. So I tried playing a classic mode run by myself. I selected classic from the menu and began playing. Being the new player that I was, I selected five lives in very easy mode. I progressed through the levels, but at the fifth one, I died. Expecting to respawn at the top of the screen, instead I got sent to the continue screen. I did a double take and reevaluated my thoughts. I knew I had five lives. After getting mad at the game for a bit, I wanted to continue, but no option was there. In fact, there were no options, just a black screen and the word continue on it. A bit freaked out, I turned off the GameCube and played some solitaire to relax myself. A bit later, after I had calmed down and rationalized that the game was just glitching, I went and phoned my brother and explained what had happened. You're just hallucinating again, bro. Calm down and try again. The game worked fine when it was with me. Maybe the disc needs to be cleaned or something. He hung up. Maybe he was right, that I was just hallucinating. After all, I pretty much do, I pretty much do it all the time in my life. After cleaning the disc off, I sat down and played again. Selected classic mode, played through it, etc, etc. Died on the 7th level this time, and again, I got booted to the continue screen. This time, however, though, instead of continue, it said nobody. I also noticed that my player character, usually in the background in the form of the trophy, wasn't there. Needless to say, I freaked out. There was no way the game could just do that. 
But it couldn't be a hallucination either. I've never hallucinated while playing video games before. I was sure of it. So what was it? I asked myself. After a bit of winding down, I took another break and asked my dad to come upstairs and play a round of Classic himself. He did, and when he died five times, he got booted to the continue screen with the normal text and the option to continue. Is that all, he, asked, he said? Jittering, I said, yeah, dad, thanks. He gave the controller back to me and walked downstairs. I needed time to digest what I'd just seen. I laid in my bed and twiddled my thumbs for a while, trying to relax, and after coming to the conclusion that it was in fact just a hallucination, I went back to bed. It was a deep sleep, I was exhausted from the day's events. The next day I felt refreshed, instead of playing Melee again, I went and loaded up Pokemon Coliseum, one of my favorites. I had come to the conclusion that it was just a hallucination, and maybe if I played a different game it'd go away. When I loaded up my save file, I spawned in Phoenix City. It was weird. I distinctly remembered saving at Outpost Stand. Fearing the worst, I ran downstairs and got my dad again to play. He ran around Phoenix for a while, talking to people, entering buildings, the usual. He handed me back the controller and asked me, is that it? I gave a sigh of relief and said, yes dad, that's it. Thanks. He went back downstairs, relaxed. I picked up a controller and went to enter, enter the Phoenix Coliseum. To my surprise, however, I couldn't enter. I tried the other buildings like the Poke Center and the Mart, and I couldn't enter those either. All the NPCs wouldn't say anything. I decided to just leave Phoenix City, and when I got to the Overworld, I tried to select a destination, but every single location was named Believes, with a blank description. Panicking, I turned off the system. This was getting way too freaky for a hallucination of mine. This simply had to be real. After about a half hour just walking around the house, I decided to try the game one more time, facing my t facing my fears. I loaded up the game again and was booted to Outpost Stand. All the NPCs talked and the game was normal. I could leave the area and go anywhere I wanted. This only served to make me more skeptical. I was ever vigilant, looking for the slightest sign of something being off. After thoroughly searching through the game and finding it completely normal, I began to play the game for real this time. It was fun and I played all throughout the night. I couldn't wait for tomorrow. My fears of hallucination vanquished. I eagerly awaited getting some time on Super Mario Sunshine. Waking up in the morning, I bolted straight to the GameCube. It felt just like old times, booting up the thing without going, without everything going all hallucinatory. I booted up Super Mario Sunshine, selected my save file, and after the loading screen, I landed in Delfino Plaza. Everything seemed fine, the NPCs said normal things, I could leave the area and all that. Then I turned my head up to the sky to see the skybox, usually filled with bright and puffy clouds. Instead, it only had three. Three gigantic clouds that each spelled the letters Y-O-U. I snapped. Everything in my body just wanted to yell out in frustration. Inside my mind, the all-familiar debate raged, real or hallucinatory. I was sick and tired of being toyed with. My rage was simmering inside my body, waiting to be released, but for some reason I didn't blow my top just yet. I was intrigued. These were definite words that the game was showing to me, words with meanings, like the game was trying to tell me something. Super Smash Bros. Melee said nobody, Coliseum said believes, Sunshine said you. It was at that moment I, then I realized what was happening. The games were telling me what I'd already known. Nobody believes me. I couldn't believe I had seen it. I hadn't seen it earlier. It was telling me that nobody trusted me. Nobody believed me just because of my condition. It was a terrible way to live. I knew this couldn't be it. There had to be more. So I walked around the plaza for a while, talking to the Piantas. While most just repeated, nobody believes you, others said more interesting things, such as, how can you live? Where will you go? Who will you turn to? What will you do? Why do you live? How can you be? I thought about these questions, the games, they were right. I was eventually going to grow older and go into my own. Go out on my own. I couldn't stay with my parents my whole life. How would I get a job to pay for a house? How would I be able to function in society if no one could trust me? As I walked around, I noticed a curious Pianta. He was dark gray, a color I'd never seen in any, uh, in any other Pianta, and wearing a black jacket and sunglasses. The jacket was scuffed up as if he had been in a fight or something. As I went to different areas of the plaza, he would always appear, saying something different. Such as, no one ever believed in him. He had no one to turn to. He lived a short life filled with deceit and mistrust. He had nothing. He knew nothing. He was nothing. So he had to end it all. Who is this man? You should know. After the message was displayed on the screen, it went black. All I could see on the screen was my own reflection, my own being. I was being shown who the message was talking about, and it was a person I knew all too well. It was myself. After I'd pieced together the message, I was completely mortified. There is, no, there is no way possible that a game could be doing this to me. It just isn't possible. It just had to be some sort of hallucination. 
I shut down the game once more and bolted downstairs to tell my parents. I blubbered to them about this scary game and talking about me and nobody believes me after calming down they came upstairs with me and played the game. I should have seen it coming. The game was completely, absolutely normal. Everything functioned properly, the Pianta said there were normal lines, it was all fine. I was simply astounded. You're just hallucinating, honey, my mom said in her usual cheerful voice. I yanked the control out of my dad's hands and started to play the game myself. Everything was still normal. It was almost like the game was taunting me. I yelled at the top of my lungs. I was so frustrated with this teasing by the game that it felt like I was going to explode. My parents tried to calm me down, but I couldn't take it anymore. It was beyond the point of the reason. Every single one of these games is different for me. It can't be a hallucination. It has to be real. I ranted and raved, but they didn't believe me. Eventually, my parents got fed up with me. They sent me to the bed for the rest of the night. While I laid in bed, I thought about the game. Was that really what I was seeing? I simply had to be, it simply had to be real. None of my hallucinations had been so persistent before. But then again, who's to say it wasn't a hallucination? How can you be so certain that anything is real? How could I know that I wasn't going crazy? I decided to consult the internet for help. First thing in the morning, I got my old camcorder out and took a video of me playing Melee again. I booted up the game and everything seemed normal. I entered classic mode again with 5 lives in very easy mode. I got all the way to the 7th level, same as before, and when I died, sure enough, the continue screen said you. In the same font, a dark translucent red. As a continue would have read. Just as I expected as well, there was no continue button or back button anywhere on the screen, just as I thought though. After once again considering the possibility of hallucinations, I shut the GameCube off and reviewed my footage. The game played completely normal, everything was fine. Once I died, the screen went to normal continue screen and cut to black shortly after. Enraged, I threw my camcorder and dialed up my brother. Hello? Oh hey Mark, what's up? Is some kind of sick joke? A bit of pause on the line. What are you talking about? These games, they keep sending me messages through them, but only I can see them. Everyone else who plays it gets the entire game as normal. What did you do to them? I didn't do anything to them, you're just hallucinating. These aren't hallucinations, they're too real. Every game I play keeps telling me that nobody believes me. Why aren't you listening to me? Then the game is right. You're just hallucinating. Goodbye. He hung up. I took a minute to collect myself. Once again, the debate raged in my mind. Is this real? I still didn't have an answer. So I decided to review the camera footage again, same thing. I sighed to myself and prepared to put the camcorder away when something started playing on the camera. It was footage of the 8th level, the level I left off on. However, instead of, the, instead of saying stage 8 across the top of the screen, it said nobody believes you. This was my definite proof that this was real. There was no way that what was caught on camera wouldn't be what everyone would see. As I watched more, the level names changed yet again. Stage 9, Race to the Finish, was Can't You See? Stage 10, The Metal Bros stage, was How Will You Live? Stage 11, the final stage, was Just Ended. The video cut out for good. I was at the, it was at the same time, elated and scared. I knew this was real. I could see it with my own two eyes. I even played back the video to see if it was still there. However, I still had the fear in my mind that I was wrong, that I was just hallucinating everything. To my bed once more I went. I decided to show the footage to my parents tomorrow. I woke up the next day feeling groggy and unsatisfied, but today was a day I knew everyone would believe me. I corralled my parents in the living room, hooked up my camcorder to the TV, and fast forwarded to the end of stage 7. I even got my brother on the phone to listen to my parents' reaction, but guess what happened? I'm pretty sure you know. Nothing. Nothing happened. The footage just cut out there. I fast forwarded through the entire black screen for a minute. Nothing was there. My parents looked confused and shifted their glances to me. Uh, April Fools? I said and laughed nervously. They just shook their heads and left the room. My brother hung up the phone. Defeated, I went to unplug the camcorder, and just as I did, the video flashed three words on the TV screen. Nobody believes you. That was it. That was literally all I could take. I yelled as loud as I could and smashed the camcorder in my hand. I know I was getting irrational, but I didn't care. I punched the wall as hard as I could, leaving about a 5 inch dent in the wall. I stormed to my room and went over to the GameCube. But the strangest thing happened. It didn't. I didn't do anything to it. My morality came rushing back to me and I realized that, even though it made my life horrible, it was still a gift. A gift that had brought me so much joy and now anguish over the past year. And it's possible that it wasn't even the game's fault for what, I, what had been happening to me. Maybe it is truly just a hallucination. Maybe it's all my fault. I was blinded by rage, blaming my brother for everything that had happened. Maybe the blame lied with me. I laid down in my bed again and contemplated what had happened to me over the past week or so. The games were right. I was a waste, and unless I lived with my parents the rest of my life, I'd be unable to do anything useful. I was so impaired in my perception of the world that it was like I was in a completely different reality. I really did have no future at all. As I thought about it more, I saw that the only way to get out of this life was to end it before it got even worse. But it would be hard.
I decided to use the car to assist my suicide, but how would I get to it? My parents didn't trust me driving at all, ever. I decided that I'd have to wait until nighttime to do this. Set my alarm clock to 1 in the morning and fell asleep. Hopefully the alarm would actually wake me up. I, I couldn't make it very loud to avoid waking my parents up along with me. Luckily it did, and it only woke me up. I sprang out of bed and carefully walked down the stairs towards my parents' room. They were both sound asleep, but the door was closed. I knew my mom kept her car keys in her room, so I needed to open the door as quietly as possible. Creak. I literally froze in place. My parents didn't even stir. I continued to slowly open the door, cringing every time it made a creak or a squeak. At one time, I thought my dad had woken up, but he was just tossing and turning. I quickly grabbed the keys out of my mom's purse and got out of the room, leaving the door open. Opening the front door, I ran to the car. I was parked outside the garage. I hopped in, turned on the ignition, and got in backed out. I went towards the back of the car, put my mouth over the exhaust vent, and waited. As I waited, I thought about the game. It was real. I awoke on the hard bed, inside a small room. The walls were a pasty white, and I had no idea where I was. I slowly drifted back to sleep after that, still unaware of what had happened. As I later learned, I had somehow survived. Apparently my dog was still awake when I tried to kill myself, and was raising a storm over me. Both my parents rushed outside and picked up my unconscious body and got me to the hospital where I was able to be treated for carbon monoxide poisoning. My parents were so worried about me that they sent me to a mental rehabilitation center to get better care of my condition. The center was a, a bit dilapidated. But I may do. There were about 50 other residents, with various mental illnesses ranging from autism to Tourette's. At that center, I was the craziest person. Not even the other patients believed my stories. They all thought I hallucinated too. In the end, the game was right. Because it was real. It was real to me. Well, that was... that was quite good. Now, as far as cliches want, uh, I didn't really see any, and I was glad this creepypasta didn't devolve into flashing copious amounts of gore and blood and cliched lines from other creepypastas, and it had genuine reactions from the player. It was really quite good. Now, if it's one thing that I really have to say about this creepypasta, and what it does so well, what really intrigues me at least, is the uncertainty. Now, I'm no psychiatrist, psycholo psychologist, or anyone in the medical profession as that's really not my uh, academic background. So I don't really know if OCD causes hallucinations. I mean, it seems like some form of schizophrenia to me. But anyone who knows more about the field, please let us know in the comments below. But for now, let's go with the fact that yes, the player has these hallucinations and this tale is written based on their account. Then how do we know if any of this is real? I mean, we've read creepypastas that only show their true selves. I mean, the, the, the games they detail only show their true selves to others. Uh, right, and uh, not in the presence of a third party. But here, no one believe, no one but the player sees this, so the evidence tips in that favor, I guess. But can we really be sure? No one believes the player, and so should we not? Should we also not believe the player? The rational thing would be to say, yeah, it's all in the head. But honestly, how can we be so sure this may not have happened? Maybe the game could be self-aware if you wanted to throw away the reasoning and skepticism, right? Maybe we, could, maybe we could believe the player, since hallucin hallucinations can't be this powerful and recurring, right? It, it has to be real. I mean, the, the player even said, this, the skeptic part of me easily thinks, yeah, the player is hallucinating. These, thing, these things, they, they, the player is hallucinating. But there always remains a form of doubt. Which is what this creepypasta does so beautifully, making such absurdly impossible events in a game seem possibly believable. This is what this creepypasta is all about, in my opinion. It really nails this. As well as the communication, it felt natural between the player and the, and the, the siblings and the parents and whatnot. And the responses from everyone did seem appropriate. It was both creepy, sad, and intriguing, and it, and it was paced well. It built up properly without turning into a mess at the end. It really makes you wonder, which is what I love so much about this creepypasta, and that's all I really have to say. It was great, unique, the length, was, the length and pacing was pretty much perfect delved into the psychological side in a proper fashion. What would you rate this creepypasta and what would you change to make it better? This has been another episode of Haunted Gaming, and if you like what you saw, then like, comment, and subscribe. This is me, Mudahar, and I am out. By the way, if you guys and gals were wondering what game this was on the screen, it's called Shadowrun Returns. It's an isometric uh, point-and-click turn-based RPG. It's like the original Fallout. It's really fun. I like the aesthetic. Uh, the gameplay is pretty cool. It's, it's, uh, it's a nice game. Uh, I'm still playing through it, so I really don't have much more to say, but it's really awesome. It's really 
I guess deep as far as uh, right now is concerned. But yeah, if you guys were if you guys and gals were wondering what game this was, it's called Shadowrun Returns. I'll always leave uh, what name of the game I'm playing in the description below, and I'll always be at the corner, as you saw in the beginning. So if you guys and gals were wondering what game this was, that's what it is. So now, this is me, Mudaharn. I am out.